What's up friends, welcome back to another video and welcome to the start of a new reading vlog. In this vlog, I'm going to be staying up all night throughout the whole week and reading Up All Night, edited by Laura Silverman. It has some of my favorite authors, including Brandy Colbert, Nina LaCour, Julian Winters, and more. And I am so excited for this. This video is a part of the blog tour for Alcon Young Readers, and I'll have the link down below for you to purchase this book and also to see the other people on this tour. I am very excited, and basically we're going to have a sleepover. Today is Monday, June 28th, and I will be reading from sundown to sunrise because that is what this book is about. I'll give you a little blurb. It says, when everyone else goes to bed, the ones who stay up feel like they're the only people in the world. As the hours tick by deeper into the night, the familiar drops away and the unfamiliar beckons. Adults are asleep and a hush falls over the hum of daily life. Anything is possible. It's time for romance and adventure, for prom night and ghost hunts. It's a time for breaking up, for falling in love, for finding yourself. Stay up all night with these 13 short stories from best-selling and award-winning YA authors as they take readers deep into these uncharted magical hours. So for all of my directioners, we're going to stay up all night this week and read this collection. I love YA contemporary anthologies, so I'm very excited for this. It's one of my most anticipated releases of the year. So let's get into the video and check what sunset is today. It is currently 7.54 p.m. and sunset is at 8.34 p.m. So I will start reading then. I am about to go and watch the Stanley Cup Finals. It is game one and I'm just very excited. So once the sun goes down, I will start reading. See you then. I wanna stay up all night Hello, it is Monday, um, it's Tuesday, actually. Hello, it is the next day, it is 6.30 at night, and I planned to talk about the book this morning, but I didn't get a chance to. Last night I read the first two stories so I'm on track and I'm gonna talk real quick about them. So the first story is Never Have I Ever by Karen M. McManus. She is a YA thriller author. I've never read from her before. This story is called Never Have I Ever and it is set during a party late at night where there are some teens who are playing a game of Never Have I Ever. They have some cards and someone pulls a card for the main character and they end up visiting a haunted house across the street and it is a murder mystery from there. I am giving it a three star. There was just a lot of talk about cops and a lot of like good praise about cops and I didn't like that. The main character even says that her dad is an excellent cop and I just hated that. I felt so awkward and anxious reading it the whole time but in terms of the story I thought it was pretty good and the cliffhanger was really great at the end so in terms of it being a story I thought it was pretty good but I just could not get past that and I just felt very sick and uncomfortable. Then the next story is called Like Before by Maureen Gu. I forgot that she was in this collection and as always I really loved her. She's a contemporary author. I've only read one book from her but all of her other books I've heard really good things about and want to continue reading her and this was about a girl named Pepper who is trying to get her two best friends together. It is like the end of their senior year. They haven't talked in a couple months and so she invites them over for a sleepover and they go through a scavenger hunt of memories and I really enjoyed it. I love stories about friendship breakup. They're very important and I thought this one was really well done. I gave it a four star and I can't wait to keep reading this. So it's only 6 30 and the sun goes down at 8 30. I'm excited to read the rest of the stories. I kind of peaked 
leaked for the third one and that one is set during winter and I think that's interesting. I think this is a great collection and an interesting prompt and you can really do anything with it so I'm excited to see what the rest of the book is like. So I will be back at sundown 8 30 to read the rest of the collection. I'm probably just going to read two stories a night and I think that that will set me on track for a week of reading. So I will be back once the sun goes down to read the rest of this collection. I had a dream last night. Okay, we're just gonna have to deal with the bad lighting for this and you're probably gonna hear Luna because she's right at the back door because she wants me to go outside with her. It's 8.09. Today sunset is at 8.33 so not too far away and I did film a clip talking about this book but my microphone wasn't turned on so let's do this again. So I ended up only reading one story last night that was Old Rifts and Snow Drifts by Kayla Whaley. She is a wheelchair user. Our main character is Eleanor. She works at a florist shop. She is a wheelchair user and she's also M-spec, meaning that she is on the multiple attraction spectrum. And we also have her snowed in with her enemy. We have a childhood friends to enemies to lovers and I really enjoyed it. I gave it a four star just because I thought that it wrapped up too nicely at the end. It felt like a little rushed and a little unrealistic but I really liked it and I would read more from her in the future. I looked her up after and saw that she has been in some other anthologies so I will definitely be checking out her work but I want to keep reading this because it's really fun. So the Stanley Cup finals are coming on and I just did a interview with Isaac Fitzsimons which will be linked down below. You can watch the IGTV. It was so fun. We finished up an hour and a half ago and it was really fun so go and watch my conversation with him. So I'll see you when the sun goes down and it's time for me to read. Hello, it is Thursday and I am very behind. <laughs> I have only read four stories so far and so tonight I have to read about like four stories. I've been in the middle of preparation for Camp NaNoWriMo. Today is July 1st so camp has started today. I was captioning my writing vlog so I had a lot of stuff going on today and last night so I didn't really get around to reading but I did read the fourth story which is Con Knight's Parallel Hearts by Marike Nijkamp and I really loved it. It's probably my favorite of the collection so far. I'm giving it a 4.5 star and there's a mild trigger warning for abuse, specifically child abuse. And I just wish that they would have some content warnings before the stories just because if I'm going into a heavy story I would just like a little warning first. I was provided the arc so I don't know what the final copy is like but I would like to just point that out. I really enjoyed it. This is set the night before a convention opens for Quinn and her friends and they are awaiting to meet the director of their favorite show, Parallel Hearts, which I would say is similar to Doctor Who. It was a rainy night of fans just sitting outside in the rain waiting for the convention doors to open. I really enjoyed it and there is some snippets of Parallel Hearts and I really enjoyed it. This is like the first one that I actually really highlighted and stuff. There's 14 minutes until sunset so as soon as sunset hits I am going to start reading because I need to. I don't have any excuses. Over the last couple of days I went to the store and I got some stuff for our sleepover. Since this is a sleepover themed vlog I wanted to do some stuff so tonight I'm going to pop some popcorn so cue the b-roll of that. 
gonna pick up Call too many times Text back saying sorry I'm drunk Why do I even try Arguing in circles for hours Cause what else can we do Hi, happy Friday. I read two stories last night and some into the morning because I read past midnight and so I didn't get to read the four stories because I'm just doing some NaNoWriMo stuff and also doing this video at the same time. So I'm just going to read at my own pace and see what happens. The two stories I read were Kiss the Boy by Amanda Joy and this was so fun. I really enjoyed this one. It features seniors in high school right after their last day of school they have senior game night and they play some games and do a scavenger hunt and it follows our main character Anaya. She has a crush on a boy named Khalil. There's a male male side romance which was cool and it had a black gay character who also did makeup and I thought that was awesome. I really enjoyed this because Anaya is the senior class president and she's just very organized always sticking to an agenda but her plans don't go as planned during this story and I really enjoyed it. It was cute and it just reminded me of my senior year of high school and I really enjoyed it. So I gave it a 4.5 star. Then I read Creeper Capture which is Laura Silverman's story and this was about a girl named Abby who was bisexual and she is also reminiscing on senior year. She's with her friend Curtis and they play this game that is similar to Pokemon Go and they're in the woods waiting for the Loch Ness monster. There's like different monsters like that that you can get in the game. They're waiting for the Loch Ness monster to spawn. It never has before and so they end up meeting this girl from school who is there with her sister and it is all about Abby just kind of realizing that she has a lot of anxiety and worries about what people think of her. The anxiety rep was so great and Abby really learns a lesson about her anxiety through Emily who is a girl from school that she would never associate with. Anxiety comes in so many different ways rather than just being anxious all the time. This really pinpoints Abby's anxiety of her worrying about what other people think of her because she thinks that this game isn't cool and it was like really popular just like Pokemon Go and now it's not popular anymore but she still plays it and she has some anxiety and guilt around there and she just kind of learns not to let her anxiety like fuel her thoughts and to just live her life and I thought it was a really solid story. Laura Silverman is so underrated. I love her book so much and I really enjoyed this. I gave it a 4.5 star and I think this was the first story that really had strong character development. So I'm excited to read the rest. The next story is Shark Bait by Tiffany D. Jackson. And so I am going to read that. Once the sun goes down, it is 7.35, so I have an hour until the sun goes down. So I'm just going to get some writing stuff done and then I will come back and read. Saturday 
there's two nights left and I have five stories to go. I read two stories last night. Last night I read Shark Bait by Tiffany D. Jackson and A Place to Start by Nina LaCour and I gave out my first five star of this collection going to Nina LaCour's story A Place to Start. This follows two step siblings after their mother's wedding and I really enjoyed it. It's just them getting to know each other. This follows Claude and Jamie. Jamie's pronouns are they, them, and their mother's just married. So they're now step siblings and they are spending the night in their new house. I loved it so much because it talks about class as Claude is now moving in with a wealthy family and she is learning more about her step sibling who she doesn't know anything about. And I just loved it. It was so great. I love Nina LaCour and all of her short stories. I read her in the Meet cute anthology and I really loved that one and I just always love her short stories and I read Shark Bait by Tiffany D. Jackson which I didn't give a rating to. The ending was a lot for me but as a story I really enjoyed it. I thought the writing was great. It is about a girl named Candace who is living on Martha's Vineyard with her mother after her parents get divorced and she meets a biracial boy named Hunter. There's a conversation about race as she thought that he was white and realizes that he's actually biracial. So there's a conversation around that and also some around him hanging out with white boys who are using AAVE and also just culturally appropriated. One of the white guys says the n-word so just a trigger warning for that but also a trigger warning for a car accident. I was not prepared for that and I think that is why this definitely needs to have some content warnings in it because I was not prepared for that and it definitely took me out of the story and I just wanted to quickly get over the story because it was very graphic for me. But overall, I thought it was pretty good and I enjoyed it. I have never read Tiffany D. Jackson before, so I was interested to see what her writing was like and I can't wait to read some of her novels. The next two stories are When You Bring a Dog to Prom by Anna Mariano and Missing by Kathleen Glasgow. Then there is What About Your Friends by Brandy Colbert. So I would like to read three tonight. We'll see what happens, but I'm definitely going to start reading at 8.30. Because the San Lucas Finals, I have not been able to read exactly at sunset. I have just been reading in between. So I am looking forward to using the rest of the night to read. But I did want to mention that the bookmark I'm using is actually from Laura Silverman. I won it on Twitter like a couple years ago where she like hand made her own bookmarks. I decided to put it in this book because it's by her and I thought that would be fun. So yeah, there we go. I don't know if you can even really see it because of the lighting. This is why I don't make commitments because I was supposed to start reading like an hour ago and I got too invested into writing stuff and research and so here we are but it's fine, I still have some time and hopefully won't get too distracted by the very loud fireworks going off in my neighborhood. Just finished When You Bring a Dog to Prom. I'm giving it a four star. I thought it was pretty good. It is set during the night of a senior prom. There is a non-binary character, Dodge, who has a emotional support dog and they bring the dog to prom. This is about our main character, Noemi, who is crushing on her best friend, Jayla's brother, Jaden. And we get to see her jealousy because he is going to prom with Dodge. And Noemi is really jealous and just wants Jaden to herself. And I thought it was done really well. It has some Latinx characters, which was cool, and I liked it. It was pretty good. I'm really liking the prom stories. It's making me reflect back on my prom days in high school. This story has a content warning for an anxiety attack, which is on page. And now I will be reading Missing by Kathleen Glasgow. <laughs> Currently, Sunday, July 4th, it is 3.09 and I have three books, three books. 
It is the last day of this reading vlog. It is three o'clock on Sunday, July 4th, and I have three stories left in this collection. Last night, I gave my second five star and still have the same opinion that these definitely need content warnings. When you bring a dog to prom, there's a trigger warning for a mention of Harry Potter. Um, there's a Harry Potter character that is mentioned, but I really enjoyed this. I talked about it more last night. I'm really loving the inclusion in these stories. Um, when you bring a dog to prom has a bi character, but also our main character says that she is still questioning. She's not really sure what her identity is yet. And I really enjoyed that. I feel like we don't see enough questioning characters, but I really love seeing non-binary characters. However, I just wish I saw more trans characters than just non-binary characters because I just feel like I'm not seeing a lot of like trans men or trans women. And I just wish we had some of that so we'll see what happens. I have three stories left but I would like to see some of that inclusion but the non-binary characters are great and I'm really enjoying seeing them and love seeing a non-binary character going to prom and just having their best time um, and yeah so then I read Kathleen Glasgow's story and this was a five star. It is called Missing and it follows a girl named Kate whose mother died and she is dealing with the grief of that. And if you're new to my channel, I love books with grief. So this was a five star automatically, but I ended up giving this a five star because it kept me reading. I was so hooked on this. They go to a haunted asylum and some things start happening because the one girl they're with has a like ghost communicator. There's some abuse and self-harm in this story so I do want to point that out. Kate is going through a lot and she is coping with grief in a violent way. She mentions that she goes to a hospital to help with her grief and just talks about her experiences. Because of their setting I really liked that. This is definitely like a horror movie kind of story and I really enjoyed it. It just had me really hooked and I was a little spooked at the end because it was like midnight and I was like oh this this one was scary and it definitely felt like a horror movie <laughs> um, but I really enjoyed it. It was done really well but I will point out that there's a lot of trigger warnings. There's death of a mother due to cancer. There's some ableism. There's a mention of menstruating and there's also vomiting. So just look out for that. But this was such a solid story that I felt like I was watching like a movie. <laughs> so the last three stories are What About Your Friends by Brandy Colbert, Under Our Masks by Julian Winters, and The Ghost of Goon Creek by Francesca Zappia. So those are the last three stories. I'm very excited to read them because they're some of my favorite authors who I haven't read in a while. But I am really enjoying this collection so far. So I will see you tonight for the last sleepover activity and to wrap up this vlog.
I just finished Brandy Colbert's story is called What About Your Friends? I'm giving it a 4.5 star. I really liked it. Brandy Colbert is great and I always love her stuff. And this was about a friendship reconciliation between two black girls, Michaela and Eleanor. Michaela has gone off to Europe for a gap year after high school. And she ends up at Eleanor College's dance marathon for a sick children's hospital. There's a trigger warning for cancer and also for racism because there is an instance that happens. But I loved it. I thought it was great. What a great setting. I think that's a great way to take this prompt and I loved it. Brandy Colbert's just great and I really enjoyed it. So I'm giving it a 4.5 star. And up next is Julian Winters. I am so excited to read his story. So I'm going to read that and then I will be back with my thoughts. One story to go. I just finished Julian Winters story. It was a superhero story. I gave it a five star. It was a gay male male romance and our main character is a superhero and now I want a whole superhero book from Julian Winters so I'm hoping that this short story turns into something more because it was fantastic. I loved this so much. Probably one of my favorites of the and I'm going to finish out The Night with The Ghost of Goon Creek by Francesca Zappia, the last book in this collection and then I'll probably wrap up my final thoughts tomorrow. In the middle of the night Hello, let's end this vlog. I took a couple of days off from filming just to take a little bit of a break and to do some editing and I did end up finishing the whole collection on the night I was supposed to. I was very proud of myself. I felt very relieved because I have not had that happen in a while and I think I am going to just start doing one book vlogs rather than secret TBR long vlogs but maybe I'll have a separate video about that. But let's talk about Up All Night. Um I'm going to give a quick review of the last story, which was The Ghost of Goon Creek by Francesca Zappia. I have not read her since I've read her book, Eliza and Her Monsters, and I really liked this. It is a ghost story set in a cemetery, and it follows this girl who likes paranormal stuff, and it is all about her anxiety. I really enjoyed that. I really liked this anthology because it had a lot of different topics, mental health, gender, sexuality, and friendship, and just the end of the year, and things like that. For a 4.5 star, this also had really good character development, and I just really enjoyed it. So that is my video for the blog tour. Don't forget to check my description to see the other participants on this blog tour, and to pick up this book or request it at your library. It comes out on July 13th in the US. I really enjoyed it, and I hope you will pick it up, and I would love to know your thoughts. Have you read any of these authors, and what was your favorite part of this video? If you stay till the end, put a moon emoji down below and give this video a thumbs up and if you liked this video and you want to see more I have a whole playlist of my reading vlogs that are similar to this so I would love if you would stick around hit subscribe and that is it for today's video I hope you're all having a great day and staying safe I have a patreon if you'd like to support me there and I will see you all in the next video bye